All right. So this next one uh, is called tough to learn. So it's just a, a skill that for you, the start would be the most difficult part of this question to learn. So this has to do with setting an on-ball screen. So uh, tough to learn, start, sober, sit, sticking the screen. So actually getting a good angle and, and hitting the guy, flipping the angle of a screen late to give a better angle or slipping it and getting out of that screen. Start, sober, sit, the most difficult for you or for players in general to learn. Okay, so start would be the most difficult? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm um, sitting, uh, slipping. I think it's just, it's it's so easy just to run up there and go, you know, screen, screen, and then just run away, right? Uh -huh. um, you know, you see so many guys and, and you know, as a four-man guarding a lot of spread fours, you can see in the scout the guys that you're not going to have to guard a pick and roll because they're just going to slip it every time, right? So, uh -huh. so it's like it's it's pretty easy to do, and and guys are just hunting their shot. So, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably sit that one in terms of, and there's it's such kind of limited options I think in terms of uh, of what you can do as a slip screener. Uh, I'm gonna sub. I'm going to sub, um, like just the classic, you know, stick solid the pick or a stick to yeah. screen. Okay. Um, and that's not to say it's more simple. I think there's a lot more to it than people realize. Um, I remember reading something or no, I was listening to a podcast of Steve Nash was on it and he was talking about how he and Amari Stoudemire with the Suns really emphasize screening with the outside shoulder so that it forces the the guard to go over the top um, yeah. and get you kind of that, especially in the NBA where everyone's sagging anyway, is to get you that downhill. Yeah. And, um, you know, I try and tell my teammates that same thing, right? Especially against the sag defenses, you know, we got some good ball handlers coming off of it. And if you can get them advantaged by, you know, screening with that outside shoulder and, and getting a piece of the guy, but more than anything, making him have to go around and end up trailing, um, I think it's a little thing. It's a detail that creates a huge advantage because not only that, but I, and I tell them for the bigs as well, because then you're opening up that window for the pocket pass, you know, and you're creating an advantage and, you know, we have great passers as guards that that'll find you for, you know, an alley-oop or a pocket pass or short roll or whatever you want. So, you know, so many guys I think are trained to just kind of go and hit them with the middle of the chest and guys can slide under easy and, and, um, or, you know, it's easier kind of for them to get around or, or the screener, you know, gets caught up on the defender. But I think the great thing about the outside shoulder is it, it limits your kind of suspect susceptibility to getting caught, you know, having to stay there and get caught with, uh, you know, the ball handlers defender is it gives you kind of some flexibility to get out and, and really get going downhill. So, um, detailed thing you can do, um, nuanced, I guess would be the right word uh thing that i don't think people realize but um sticking the screen would be my sub and then uh, just for the difficulty of it i think flipping the screen uh would be my start yeah you got to worry about making a moving screen um and i think there's a lot of things you can do depending on the situation of of how you can make it an effective screen so i mean like i'm i guess i'm not really giving away a tip but like for me, if I know I'm going to flip the screen, you know, and I, I, I like to do it, um, you know, when the defense is ready, you know, it's like the last play of the quarter or whatever. And they, everyone knows you're going to do a ball screen. And so I'm trying to set it up as a screener and I'll run up and I'll be saying, you know, as an offensive guy, Hey, screen left, screen left, screen left. But I'm snapping my right hand, like on the backside of the, of, uh, you know, so my ball handler can see it knowing that I'm going to slip, you know, flip it. And the footwork has to be good. Um, you know, it's gotta be concise and efficient to get you there. So you're not given the moving screen. Um, and I think it's also reading the situation, you know, I, I think you can kind of, maybe you plan to do, flip the screen, or maybe you see that your guy's right on your tail, you know, ready to do the hard hedge. And so if you can flip it last minute, you've got the whole side free, right? You almost got like a yeah. five, mm -hmm. five on three or, or what have you. So, um, you know, I think that more in terms of practice and and technique is, is, uh, it's probably the most difficult. Okay. Luke. Uh, yeah. Ju just, I mean, since we're on it, what is the footwork then that you'll use to flip the screen? Okay. So I'm, 
I think first off for the screen, it's important when you, when you, so you say, I'm, I'm coming up from the paint, right. And the center yeah. ball, uh, pick and roll, and I'm going to faking, like I'm going to screen on the left side. Right. So the defense would be calling out screen left. And so I'm getting there and I'm going like, God, I almost have to get up. And... <laughs> so like, <laughs> um, I'm going to set it, but I'm kind of like moving in a U, okay, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of like, it's almost like a, I don't know if it's a do si do or, or <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like okay. a little bit of a dance, like tango where I'm trying to scre- like Hook whip around. to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the most important when you're whipping to the other side is establishing that outside foot. Cause okay. obviously they call moving screen nine times out of 10, because the guy's moving that outside foot and going into the guy and knocking him, you know, towards half court. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so if you establish that right foot, you can get away with that left foot, you know, maybe not being so established because that guy's going to, you know, come into your chest, but you're not going to be leaning, yeah. you know, pushing him out that way. So, um, for me, it's, it's really about getting from kind of doing that 180 U turn, uh, you know, as fast as possible and establishing that outside foot. And it, so on that U-turn, is it like, is it like a one, two end of the screen or are you kind of like, like a little, I don't, I don't know, what a, a mini hop or like a shuffle? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, let's see, hold on. Let me the earphones here. Hold on. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm doing like, yeah. Okay. Like probably a one, two. <laughs> for, for those, those so I'm doing a one, two, but kind of, <laughs> I'm doing a one, two, but kind of sliding, yeah, you're kind of like, sliding that left foot. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're dragging the, yeah. The second foot area, yeah, the inside foot. Yeah. After and it's important that the ball handlers, I, I mean, I especially do it when a ball handler is, uh, hopefully he's, he hasn't dribbled the ball yet. You yeah. Know, okay. If he's dribbling that defender's moving and, and it's so much harder, but if that defender's kind of stationary, you can kind of yeah. flip it quick. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know how okay. good that is for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. But we'll just, we'll just, for those listening, Luke just got up and gave us the visual demonstration. That was, yeah, that's a just first on the, the podcast. On the chair. That was good. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a visual learner, man. So, <laughs> no, so that's, that's, that, that's, how, that's how I learn. <laughs> um, Luke, my, my, my quick follow up for you on this one uh, with your start, you've mentioned a couple of times that throughout the podcast about communicating to your ball handler with hand signals or with your hands. So whether it's a pick and roll or whether it's like cutting, um, how much is that just, you know, you guys kind of naturally get it or do you work on sort of different hand signals with certain guys to communicate on the court? No, I, I don't think it's, uh, we don't really work on it too much. I mean, obviously there's the, the classic, yeah. like I'm coming for a screen, but I mean, I think the only reason to use this is to, to make the other team think you're going to screen. I, I think it makes okay. no sense to go like this and actually go and set a screen. Right. So I mean, nine times out of 10 of a guy's going like this, he's going to slip it anyway, but, um, it's not something we teach, but I think it's something that's really effective. And it's kind of like a subconscious thing a little bit, okay. much like, you know, when you're in the post, um, showing a hand to where you want the ball, like when you're posting up, right. Cause if you're battling a guy here and you know, you're open, but your hands are down and, um, your guard doesn't know where to pass it, like just giving them a hand or like, I'll tell them like, you know, against a mismatch just to remind them, I'll go high, high, high. And I'll point the finger up to throw that mm-hmm. lob pass. Cause I don't want them rolling it down there and they can anticipate and try and steal it. Um, you know, I think okay. the use of hands, eyes, I'm a big eyes face, making weird faces guy. So, <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of the raised yeah. eyebrows, especially yeah. when I'm passing the ball and, or kind of using like a little, head turn. And, um, that's not something I train They kind of just come naturally, okay. yeah, unfortunately sure. to me, but, uh, I think it's definitely something you, uh, that's more of just kind of the chemistry between, between players. Sure. All right, Pat. Or yeah, Luke, Mike, sorry. My last one, uh, on the, uh, the sticking the screen, I guess my follow up is when to release out of that screen and maybe just like a mini start sub sit within it. Are you looking, is it more important to, know who you're screening for as far as when you should be getting out of that screen or the defender on ball, or is it the coverage in general that the defense is playing? I think it's, I think it's, uh, I mean, all of them, yeah. <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> 
you know, a stick in the screen, obviously you're going to stick to screen way more when you're, when I'm like, when I'm screening for Marcus Erickson, who's one of the best shooters in Europe, I'm, I'm going to try and stick to screen. Mm-hmm. And, um, and hopefully by then, you know, early I try and stick the screen just to see how the defense is, is playing. Cause some, some guys are going to do an aggressive hedge kind of trap, uh, on ball defense. And at that point, if they do that, you, a, you got to have the, you know, faith in your teammate that they're going to be able to, you know, talk about holding steady under pressure is then you can slip, right? Cause if they're going to double team and you can kind of slip and short roll out of it, that's great. But a lot of teams, you know, they, they do a hedge, like a, a short hedge and then recover. Yeah. And I found that with shooters, you know, the, especially teams that like sag, they're like, Hey, with, you know, Erickson, we got a, we got a hard hedge, you know, we got to hedge and recover cause he's a good shooter. but they don't, they hedge and i still won't move as a screener and then they'll come back. And so sometimes Marcus mm-hmm. is looking at me like roll. And I'm like, Oh, just wait. And <laughs> they go back and then Marcus comes off with a wide open screen. It's just a three. So, um, depends on your, you yeah. know, uh, your, it depends where you are on the court as well. Um, you know, most of the time when I'm doing a sideline pick and roll, I, I'm slipping it because it's so tough to guard. Um, and when you're coming kind of horizontal and then immediately going vertical and have that open baseline, I think it's so yeah. tough to guard and, and it's, you know, your, your ball handler has that sideline on his back. So he can't, you know, most of the time can't free side or, or doesn't have as much room to maneuver. So I think for them, it's better to kind of open yeah. up some space. And most of the time you get open you get the role, but, um, you know, it depends on the ball handler too. If, yeah. If, you know, there's a guy, I don't have a lot of confidence in coming off a pick and roll. I'm going to slip as well, just because, especially if they're not dribbling, um, you know, I think it's much easier. They can just hold it and I slip early. They can find me. Um, but if it's a good ball handler, a good passer off the pick and roll, um, you know, I'll try and stick it a little bit more and get, you know, like I said, with the outside, so they're coming downhill and we can play a little two man game against the pick and roll coverage. And, um, yeah. And I definitely won't stick a screen if, you know, I think the biggest pet peeve is those, those guards who start coming off the pick and roll before you're set. So it's yeah. just inviting an offensive moving screen foul for you. So, yeah. I mean, most of the time I'm going to slip that. I'm not going to stick that thing. Cause that's just going to put me in trouble and give me a foul trouble. But, um, you know, it depends uh, definitely on, 